These things are not normal in the world we live in. You don't see massive healings in, uh, in today's world, but God has not changed. And so you can read what happened in the days of Jesus and apply it to yourself right here, right now. Um, God can do what he's always done and he can certainly do it in your life. You know, that's what's so great about the kingdom of God is we all have access to God directly. So we don't have to depend on someone else to get us close to God or help us to receive something from God. He will honor his word in your life directly to you uh, if you if you want that. And so uh, let's go and talk about we, we looked at how Jesus healed them all. Over and over again, you see Jesus healing everyone in the crowd. That is another way to say God's will is healing for all because he didn't select certain ones and heal them only. And tell in, He never told anyone, you're going to have to stay sick. That never happened. Uh, and b in fact, the opposite happened. Many times he healed everyone in the crowd. Uh, and, and that just produced more crowds. And there was nothing that he didn't heal. There was no instance where he said, this illness is really not with, in my wheelhouse. I'm not able to deal with, with the, a lame person or I'm not able to heal blindness. He, there was nothing that Jesus didn't heal and there was no one that he turned away. So as our faith in God is, is, is increasing, it's so important to understand why we emphasize this one point, that you and I must believe that healing is the will of God for us. Faith begins where the will of God is known. I used this illustration. I wanted to bring it up uh, one more time. And that is if a, if, a, if a very wealthy person stood in front of a congregation and said, I'm going to give everybody in this church a thousand dollars. If this guy was really rich and he had millions of dollars at his disposal. He could tell a church of three or four hundred people, I'm going to give everyone in this in this building a thousand dollars. Well, if if someone said that and you were in that building, you would have full confidence that you were included in that offer. However, if you reverse that and say, and that same rich man said, I'm going to give 50 people a thousand dollars, you know that he's able to do that, but you're not sure if it's for you. You would never be totally sure that he was going to give you a thousand dollars. And if you went forward to try to find out and somebody said, well, you know what, it's not, you're not one of the 50. Well, you'd have nothing to stand on. You'd have no recourse. You'd just have to go away empty handed. But at the same, in the same place, if, a, if, if somebody said, I'm going to give everyone in here $1,000, you could have full confidence that you're included in that group. And this is what happens when people go halfway with the doctrine of healing. And they say, I know God can heal. And I know God does heal. And I know He's able to heal the sick. But I'm just not sure that He heals everyone. I don't know if His will is healing for everyone. Once you take that away from your faith, once you, once you limit God's healing to a few or to some or to most, then you have no confidence or no one would have any confidence that it would be for them specifically. And we have to do away with that. We have to realize that God's will is healing for everyone. God has, has provided healing through Jesus for every single person. And I didn't say everybody's healed. I didn't say everybody's going to receive their healing. We all know of cases where it didn't happen. But we need to establish this truth that healing is the will of God for everyone. And let's work from that place. Let's, let's go forward from that, that foundation, build on that foundation that healing is God's will for everyone. Because if you, if you, don't, go, if you don't go that far, uh, you, you really can't be sure of anything else. I mean, it, it just robs you of your confidence and your faith. So let's look at how Jesus, in the last session, we talked about how he healed them all. Over and over again, it says he healed them all. He healed them. As many as touched him were made whole. Everybody got healed. But I want to bring this point out that not only did he heal 
everyone in most cases, many cases, but he healed them of anything. <laughs> and that's important because, you, you know, we have new diseases we're discovering and they're not listed in the Bible. They weren't known back then. And so, you, you know, and they're, they're, you know, medical science has just developed like everything else and it's become so complex and it's so, it, it sounds so authoritative. But let me just assure you, God can heal anyone of anything. His power is not limited. He is able to heal the sick. You know, he was around before sickness and disease. God is the solution. Before there was a problem, he is the solution. So there is nothing. I've said it this way. If there is a question, <laughs> there was an answer before there was a question. This is the world we live in. There was a Savior before there was a need for to anybody to be saved. Jesus was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And so uh, God is out ahead of everything. If there is a sickness and disease, you can be sure there's a solution for it. God has the answer. In fact, the answer was here before the problem was. Before HIV, before cancer, before uh, COVID, before any of these illnesses ever became a thing, God's healing power existed. He's the answer and He was here first. So there's nothing that God can't heal. And in so many cases, we see the fact that He did heal everything. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. It says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. I just love that. This is the, the formula for today. Teaching, preaching, healing. It was the formula then, and it's still the same formula today. Jesus went about teaching and preaching and healing. But notice it's not limited. All kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed. I, I just love this. I didn't underline these, but man, I, look at how many times it says all. All kinds, all sickness, all disease among the people. His fame spread. They brought him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torment, torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. It doesn't say that he didn't heal quite all of them, that, that, that there were certain things he healed and certain things he didn't. They brought him all kinds of sick people, and he, he healed all kinds of diseases. He also delivered those who were demon-possessed. So his power is not just limited to one area or one thing. Verse 25, great multitudes followed him from Galilee, from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. What a scene. I'll tell you, I, I love reading these examples. Um, and, and the reason is the Bible, you know, the Bible's not just a history book. We're not just supposed to read it and say, boy, that was good for them. I wish I'd been there. I wish I could have been there on that day. Maybe I could have received my healing. That's not what this is all about. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did then, and these, these Bible stories and accounts are written for our benefit what God is saying through this is not, it's too bad you weren't around back then. What God is saying is, what I did then, I can do now. What I did for them, I can do for you. There are very few things that you can read today um, in, in any medium and, and, or see or watch or hear that are as encouraging as the Bible itself. God is telling us through His Word, through accounts, through scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, in every way possible, what I've done before, I can do again. What I did for them, I will do for you right here in this life. Being blessed and prosperous is not wrong. Greg Fritz gives you an honest look at God's Word to show that God delights in the prosperity of His people. Call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time 